Welcome back to SharePoint Framework for Beginners. How do you configure a web part? Well, you need to use properties. Let's dive straight in. So today we're going to add properties to our web part that we developed in episode four. Wouldn't it be great if we could configure what the times of day were that define an afternoon and an evening to display our message? Wouldn't it be good if we customized the message that we showed? It would also be good if we could say how big to show the message and whether to align it to the left, center or right. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode. Note, all the supporting source code for this episode is in the link below. So let's go to our code and see how we can add properties. So here is a typical SharePoint page and here is a web part I've dropped in. This is the countdown timer. This comes with SharePoint. Now by looking at the properties by clicking the pencil icon, you'll see it has things like a header. It has groups of controls and it has property controls to control what's going on in our web part. So you have things like date and time, uh, how to display the timer as a drop down there. You've got text boxes to add in and toggle switches. Notice you can also show and hide different controls based on toggle actions. Well, we can do all of that within our solution, but out of the box, you don't get all the controls you need. You get drop downs, check boxes, you get buttons and sliders, but you don't get things like date controls. And although you can build custom controls, which is out of scope of this uh, episode, you can make use of the PMP controls, the partners and practices controls, and they provide all the missing controls for us. So we'll look at that later, but some of these are great. And there's date time picker, for example, file picker, list picker, the list goes on. So this is our web part. The source code can be found below for the complete example. And notice the properties I've got in here are things like, what is the title for the web part? Do I show the full name, the part name, or no name? Do I show a time-based message like good morning, good afternoon, or good evening? When does this start at? When does it finish? What style do I want to put this text in? And do I want it to be centered or do I want it to be aligned right? That's all well and good. The problem is this isn't how our web part currently looks. The one we developed in the last episode looks like this. So how do we get our web part from looking like this to looking like this? Well, let's dive straight into the code. So I'm going to start with the JavaScript project we developed in the last episode. And I'm going to open it in Visual Studio. So if you click into the TypeScript file for your welcome web part and scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that there is this get property pane configuration. So at any time if we edit the web part, this function is called to get the properties. So the first thing we need to do is add all the properties that we want to capture in our web part. So in order to do that, we need to go to our interface. And at the moment, we've got one property called description. This comes out of the box. Here, I want to add all of our properties, and I'm going to take this from a source code. The source code link is available below. So here I've added all my properties. We have a title, a message style, uh, how I want it aligning. And notice they're all of different types. The next thing I want to do is add these properties to our property pane configuration. So notice we've only got the description in there at the moment. Well, what I want to do is I want to make it dynamic. So for example, if I choose show time-based image, I want certain fields to appear. If I switch that toggle off, I want those to disappear. And what's good about these properties is that we can build them up because after all, they are just JSON objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array to hold all of my message fields. So I'm gonna go above the return and I'm going to add that in there. Then what I'm going to say is if this is a time-based message, 
I want to show the properties for the good morning message, the afternoon message, the evening message, the afternoon time and the evening time. So I'm going to add those in. So here we have all of our properties. Notice it's warning me because I haven't put a label in there and we'll get to those in a little bit. Well, what happens if we're not showing a time-based message like good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, then I simply just want to capture the message in there. Okay, so we now have set our properties up in an array to say, okay, if it's show time-based message, uh, what do you want to say for good morning, good afternoon, good evening? Otherwise, what's the message? All will become clear soon, but I do want to get rid of these errors that we've got in here. And notice it's giving me some errors for some of these properties. Well, by default, it's brought the text field in, but if I look at that and go to the IntelliSense, it notices it's from the SP property pane declaration. So I'm just going to add that in there, and it knows about that. And the property pane slider it knows about because of that. So it's brought all of these in for me. If I look at the top, it's brought in property pane slider, property pane text field. So let's try and get rid of these messages here. And this is all to do with our language strings, our locale. But essentially the location file, this was described in the anatomy of a web part lesson. This is where we contain our strings that are used and it allows for different languages to be used. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in strings for all of our properties. So I'm going to get rid of the description one that's in there. So I'm going to add in the properties to support our web part. These are the strings for the labels. I've got a couple more that I want to put in there. The message label and the title label. Notice there's one in there for the property pane description, the big one you saw at the top, the uh, group name and uh, the description field label. Although, to be fair, we don't need to use this one anymore. That can actually be removed. That's the default one that's added, but I guess it doesn't matter if we leave that in. The next thing I want to do is add the strings that match these. So I'm going to copy these properties from the sample code please see the link below. And notice I'm putting in for each of these uh, a simple message to display, message label, message text, show name, first name only, etc. But when I go back to my web part now, those errors have gone away because it's saying I know what strings to use for those labels. So currently we've created this array of different properties. So the first thing I want to do is edit this. I'm simply going to delete it. I'm going to replace it with the code from our sample code. So here I've replaced the full function with this super complex piece of code. Don't switch off. Don't worry yet. Let me just explain this to you. I'm building up an array of fields. So these are shown depending on what I've chosen. If I've said show time-based message, then show it, otherwise hide it. Then I'm returning this big structure, which is based around pages. It's got the header in there. It's got groups in there, and it's got all these different controls. There's one it's missing, the property choice group. I'll add that to our input. This is where I'm going to choose full name, first name, or no name. Then we've got the toggle. I'm going to add that as well. That's an out of the box one as well. Then I've got a choice group for H1, H2, etc. And I've got one for text alignment. I would really advise you download the code and try this out for yourself from GitHub. So now when we run this, let's see what happens. So I'm going to add in our web part. Looks very similar to the one we did last week. But now when I click on here, we have this really detailed property pane. So let's have a look. We've got the welcome web part.js. Well, if you remember in our code, this was a string for the header with welcome web part.js written in it. Then we had all this detail in the string for the description. Then we had a group setting. And then we had for a label for each of our controls. Now, if I set this to hello, this is great, but absolutely nothing is happening. When I click on my properties, nothing is changing in this. This is because every time the web part renders, 
it needs to use these properties within its render code. So let's have a look now at what we need to do there. So we've added all of our properties into our file, but look, the render hasn't changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that now. So the first thing I want to do is replace this good morning with our property that we're now passing through because this message is now part of our properties. So we're not hard coding it. Therefore, we also need to alter the time code. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy a little bit of code from our sample code. I'm going to replace all of this and paste that in. So what have we got? Well, the message is equal to the default, which is whatever we set it in the properties. Then notice if we're showing a time-based message, then we get the date, we check our hours, but instead of doing a hard-coded 12 or 17, we check it against the evening time. If it's not evening, then we check the hours and we do it before the afternoon. And then we know which message we're going to display, morning, afternoon, or evening. Next, do you notice I said, do you want to split the name? Well, this is very easily done. I'm gonna put a line of code in there. I say name parts equals this uh, context username split by the space. What we then do is we have a variable called name and I switch on whether we show just the name. And I say, if it's full, then use the full name. Otherwise, just use the first part of our array. You may want to change that to be configurable in the future using maybe a comma or another symbol. Finally, we need to go through and we need to see whether it's aligned or not. Now, the only way to really align this is by using a CSS class. And I don't want to dive too deep into this at the moment, but essentially we need to set that class up to do that. So I'm gonna leave that off our code at the moment. So I'm going to create a variable called message content. And this is going to include our message and it's going to include our name variable. So this is the message content. Then I simply want to render this message out. So I'm gonna remove all the styling from before. So I'm going to do a simple div and put the message content in it. So before I run my web part, there's one last thing I want to do, and that's why I want to set the default values. This is set in the manifest file under the properties. So it's good to do this for your web part, and when we come to the deployment episode, I'll go through this in detail. But if you have a look for this file here, which is the manifest file, and you will see there is a properties field. If we remove the description, and we paste in some default values. So for example, I've got welcome, I've got hello as a default message, good morning, etc. Now, when I add my web part to the page, you'll see these default values set. When I look into them, it set all these for me. So if I change the full name to first name, you'd see the one disappear. If I showed a time-based message, you'd say good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. And I could change these to coffee time for example as we're in the afternoon soon be home time and i can set when this starts and finishes i haven't wired up the style settings yet and the text alignment what we'll do is take a quick look at that next so the first thing we need to do is look in the scss file this is the sas file that it uses for its styling what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace everything with some custom styling I've created to allow me to align everything up. So here I'm going to add some styles for left, right and centering. And I'm going to replace these web part styles with some simpler ones. I'm going back to my web part and I want to add some simple styling code in there. Now we've added our CSS in, I'm going to add in this text align variable. And this text align variable will be set to styles left, styles right, style center. Note, we haven't compiled yet that the CSS will give us this error. 
Then what I want to do is amend the message content. And if you remember, the message style is stored as H1, H2, or P, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it into an HTML element just by simply taking the value. So properties dot message style. I'm going to add in the class and I'm going to put a closing brace in there as well. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying generate an HTML element like h1, h2, h3 based on the message style. Set the class to the text align, which is left, right or center as we set up in our SAS file. Now it's showing an error at the moment because I haven't built it. When I save my files, the errors go away. I'll do gulp serve to run our solution. So I'll add my web part and notice the font has now changed. So if I look at my properties, I can change that and I can also change the alignment too. So every time we change one of these properties, it's calling that function in our code, get property pane configuration in order to get the property pane values. The last thing I just want to quickly show is that you've got all of these controls available from PMP SPFX. Very simple to install. If you look at the getting started, you just need to follow the instructions there. I'll put the link below for that and then you can have a play adding all these other controls in there. What I would suggest you do is look at the default out of the box description property and play around with that first. Maybe add in some simple properties but please use the code listed below as a guideline to help you expand your knowledge of properties. They're quite a detailed subject and we could take a long time over them. Hopefully this will give you a start to using properties. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on web part properties. Join us next time where we'll look at accessing data in SharePoint lists. If you haven't done already, please click subscribe and the notification icon so you can be kept up to date when the next episode is released. I'll see you next time.